Hi, welcome to another Build Day TV episode, carrying on our series looking at the Oracle VMware solution. I'm Alistair Cook, and uh, I'm here to really listen to uh, Tom Green explain to us how he connects our uh, OCVS solution to the uh, Oracle networking that we deployed in the previous video. So, uh, welcome back, Tom. How's everything going today? Uh, things are fantastic. How are, how are things uh, this early morning? Well, it is again an early morning so that we uh, can actually get some work done in a normal time for the rest of the team because, of course, uh, behind the cameras is Mr. Jeffrey Powers, as always, doing everything he can to make us look good. Hopefully, we'll make this job easy as we can. So we've previously deployed a uh, Oracle Cloud Network. We've deployed a jump host, and we've, we've looked at the integration of a fast connect to join the data center in Chicago, which is our uh, CTO advisor data center, to our new Oracle environment. And we've deployed the Oracle VMware solution. If you missed those videos, do go check back through the channel and the playlist. It's a whole heap more really interesting content through there. But today we want to integrate the actual VMware side networking with our Oracle network. So how do we go about that one, uh, Tom? Yeah, the uh, first way, first place to start with Oracle is you're going to start at the landing page after you've logged in. Uh, make sure that you're in the correct region. If your region is not where your uh, VPC and VMware is, there will be nothing going on. And you'll wonder if you accidentally deleted things. Uh, Definitely hasn't happened to me, right? You know, oh, I've, I've never chosen the wrong wrong location and been surprised that I couldn't find resource. It's yeah. far worse though when you, you don't realize you've chosen the wrong location and you build things and the next day you come back and you can't find them. Yeah, that, uh, that doesn't never sound happened. like a, a good day whenever <laughs> you have a little panic on that one. Uh, so as we've always, we went through, uh, you can either do the search or you can click on the uh, menu to pull it out. Uh, you're running to look for VMware solution, whether you're searching or using the menu. VMware solution will get you where you need to be to start the networking from OCVS into uh, your primary on on premises data center. Uh, so when you're going in and you're clicking the correct uh, SDDC, Oracle has given us some really nice little wizards and options for how to uh, connect back into the data center. So maybe networking isn't your strong suit or you just want to use a wizard to quickly get going. The very first button here says configure connectivity to your on-premises data network. That's pretty handy. That's exactly what we're trying to do. So we're going to click on that and it's going to come up. It's going to ask you what is the SDDC network that you're, you're trying to do. So this is the workload domain inside NSXT. Uh, 10.255.9.0. Uh, as a reminder, that's outside of the scope of our VPC or our VCN. We so the, the, our, the network that we've declared that Oracle side manages is our 10.255.0.0 slash 22. Yeah, yeah uh, I believe 21. Uh, 21. Um, okay. And then we've we've taken the next range up from that for running the N6 network. So we're we're using it this uh, cider block within the the next range up. So that's the the default cider, and we're just going to leave it at that for now. We're going to go and address how to expand that out as you add new uh, subnets in a in a moment. Our on premises cider, if you remember, it's ten dot zero dot zero dot zero slash nine. And that'll get us most of the address space that we're going to be considering through this project. And it definitely takes us back to Chicago, uh, but it could as data centers expand, we wouldn't have to change that rule. So you click on next and it says, this is what you need to do to configure the connectivity. And this is very nice. It's not just click a button and get connectivity. It's showing you everywhere that uh, the automation is going to change. Uh, it's important you as an administrator, I didn't want to necessarily run this wizard every time I wanted to uh, to add an extra NSXT segment. So I'm seeing it's going to the route table for the edge of one uplink or edge one uplink. And it's adding the route there. And that's the uplink that's going to get from 
NSXT out to the VCN and then across the Fast Connect. And it's also adding a route to the uh, DRG. It's going to add that route there. And then it's going to so go into the, 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 the top one is configuring the overlay network and yeah. the, the lower one is configuring, configuring the underlay network. Is that correct? I what believe so. Yeah. Uh, this one, yeah, that one's going to be telling the uh, edge router how to, how to route it out. And this is, yes, telling the DRG where to find the, the route. So, yeah. Right. And then it adds the security group rules for you as well. And the security group rules are actually pretty wide open. It's saying anything from the on-premises cider we just put in can come in. And then anything at all can go out. And that rule is actually there by default. Right. So, we're... so that's, that's saying that we trust our entire enterprise network to access the, the virtual machines that we're deploying on top of the solution. Correct. Yeah. We, we trust everything in Chicago. So that we're may or may not be uh, how you choose to do things in production, depending upon your security stance. Yeah, that is a very good point. But we clicked it. It says it's done. We close out of here, and it actually tells you here what it was updated. Let's look at the route table. Click in, and as you can see, all the uh, traffic is pointing to the distributed uh, router or dynamic router is going out that way. The true test of the matter is going to be, can we get from a host into there? So if you remember from the jump box episode, we are able to connect to the jump box from, so it looks like I forgot a rule. Where did I not put that? Here we go. When we were reversing changes, I reversed that, which stopped our one too many. Well, I didn't unreverse oh, enough. Didn't, yeah, didn't roll back forward. Yeah, roll back forward. Okay. All right. So we're ready. We're uh, going to come in. We're going to go into the vSphere server. We're going to log in with the administrator at vSphere.local because you get administration. I haven't went in and done other sources of authentication quite yet. My username and password are required. I thought I'd type that in. And we... Uh, so probably you need to refresh the page and get the certificate warning back up. It's likely another networking issue. Let's go look at the, the networking on... Yeah, look at that. At least this is a new and unique way of breaking things. I suspect the router on vSphere. All right, so there is a route. Anything on the... Eight? But there, is, there isn't a route that goes to the um, jump host network. 10.255.0.0 slash 21. All right, so I've run into an error like that before. So if you're working in the Oracle client or in the Oracle website and you get an, any sort of errors that pop up when trying to add route rules, it is because of this. The cookie doesn't like having two tabs open at once. So the, the solution to that is to close and reopen. So see the default route table. So that hasn't got a route to get into the, um, to the VMware. Yep. So we're going to do, we're going to do a private IP whenever you deploy the OCVS. It actually assigns a IP range on uh, one of your subnets as the the target for any traffic coming in. And then... Uh, we, shouldn't we be trying to hit the 0, dot, 0 slash 21 at the moment? Well, this was the jump host trying to get into the vCenter. Oh, yeah, it is, it is. You're right, of course. The vCenter IP. Yeah. yeah that's actually a good... A good question because we have this jump host, which is using this default route table. Yeah. And then we have v, the Veeam Center, which is using the vSphere route table. So it's saying anything for that's going to go in there. So the, since they're adjacent, they're they're adjacent. So maybe 
is it a security role that got messed up? So as long as everything in to vCenter from our trusted networks. So now we're going to test out that connection to the vCenter and the VMs and everything is, is working. So we're going to jump into our jump host, which is in the uh, VCN. If you remember, it's outside of the OCVS network. We're going to go in and look at our vSphere client. Logging into the vSphere client will, will allow us to get to the console of some virtual machines that have already been pre-provisioned. Uh, they weren't provisioned by Oracle. It's work that has been done uh, around you know, Active Directory and DNS and such. And when Tom says work that's been done, he means work that he has done. Yeah. I don't want to take all the credit here. Your hands on the tools, my friend. Yeah. So, so see, we're able to log into the vSphere client, and it's the OCVS vSphere. Let's we look at the because, as I said, we have a domain controller that's been been launched. So I'm just going to actually open a console on the domain controller. I don't take any sort of uh, networking wizardry out. We're just going to look at it as if it was a brand new machine. So we're accessing all of the VMware interfaces over the without using NSX, but the networking for this VM is happening through NSX. Yep, correct. That the uh, that we just added. Yep, the host and the you know, vCenter NSX managers and edges are all outside of NSX, and they're just in a flat VCN. Think about it as a a stand a distributed switch that are is utilizing subnets inside your VCN as the the backing, the underlay on that. And that's all management network, not guest VM network. Yeah. Correct. So we've set up our own uh, network. We're inside of a virtual machine. We're going to ping the domain controller in Chicago from a virtual machine inside of the OCVS. Can you do a test route for me on that? Sure. To see where where we're seeing hops coming along. I uh, should have got you to do a trace out minus D because DNS isn't working for all of the uh, infrastructure pieces. Minus D, sure. That doesn't do a DNS lookup on the IPs as we go. All right. So we're starting out at our default gateway on that subnet. Mm -hmm. It's going out. It's hitting. So that's already got to. Yeah, so it's right here is the uh, customer premises equipment. That's that's the uh, BGP link on the 172.16. Yep, the 172.16 is the BGP in Chicago, and then there's the actual host itself, the AD server in Chicago. So it doesn't hit the public, I guess right there, is it's hitting the uh, uh, fast connect at that point. Mm -hmm. right. So... We have connectivity through from NSX all the way through to through Chicago, which is good because we're setting up some other uh, infrastructure to merge the two environments. And what we want is the virtual machine networking all linked up to the uh, Chicago virtual machine networking so we can treat this as just another data center. Yeah, so we've proved so we, that up. We have that done through the automation that Oracle provides, which was really nice but you wanted to do a, a slightly more general solution because that only connected one subnet, didn't it? One, one slash 24. So we, whenever you want to do it, it uh, we can go back through the wizard, but as you, you may have noticed when you saw it, it said it was creating a route in the DRG route table. It created a route in the NSX edge uplink one route table. Mm -hmm. And then it created some security rules. But you also, if you're wanting to connect well, we'll start with that. So inside of there, let's go into the DRG route table. It only has one route, and it's the one that it created for us. So that's 255.9.0, which was the default workload domain or uh, CIDR that we, we created. And there's a couple of ways we can go in and we can add a slash 24 destination for every subnet as we make it. But I think more efficiently, we could we could generalize this and we can edit it. And we can step this up to an eight slash 
21. And what's really nice here, um, I'm not sure if it's been noticed, but it tells you all the IP addresses in the range whenever you create a CIDR range here. So that's allowing us to have multiple subnets defined inside of NSX and just handle them all through a single route table yeah. entry. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. So it's actually pretty efficient and it helps, you know, as we've discussed in the past, I'm not necessarily subnetting in my head as quickly as this calculator can do it for me. So we'll save that change. And as you can see now, the destination is a little more general. And this is anything in the uh, current NSX range that we have. And we also want to do check this, the NSX sublink one that was the route out to the local. And that's fine. And then lastly, if we want to talk to it from the jump host, we'll go into the default route table. As we see, that's already been added into the default route table. And the other one was uh, security lists. I believe that the security lists are going to be working. So saying anything at all in the 10 dot, whenever we were looking at it earlier, all is going to be trusted if it's on the uh, network that we've defined. Everything on our, our internal address range is trusted. Yep. Through the magic of automation, we do have another route set up, but we're going to have to go in and create a new segment. The new segment is going to be for VDI that we're going to be deploying for VMware View. So we don't necessarily want those to be taking up our web or, or our app uh, sub you know, segments that are already created. So I think we are ready to do that. We're going to open up our... NSX manager, which we have, once again, I can't say this enough, we have admin rights to. We log in and we have the keys to the kingdom. If you don't know NSXT or if you're not very strong in it, uh, you, can, you will just sit here and stare and be like, okay, well, where do we go first? I know just enough to be dangerous. Uh, the subnets are, are in the segments tab or segments area. As you can see here, we have the workload, an app, and a web that have already been pre-created. So we're going to create a, a VDI segment. Right. That's just the name. We want it to be connected to the Tier 1 gateway. That's where the workloads go. Uh, and then there's a route in the Tier 1 gateway that sends any internet traffic out uh, the Tier 0. And the Tier 0 re relates back to the target IP we set whenever we were setting route rules for how to get back inside. So we're going to add our subnet. Whenever you're adding a subnet, you don't necessarily say the subnet range, but you do say the gateway and the, and the bit mask. So you don't necessarily say we're going to do 10.255.15.0/24. That's going to be the actual cider, but we would instead say .1. And I'll tell NSX, this is the gateway that we're going to use. And for the D and we're going to set up DHCP since this is for VDI. Looks good. We're going to add, and you can set this to any, whatever you want the IP uh, gateway to be. Oh, Just, the distributed router lives on that, yep. that IP. Yep. Yeah, it creates an interface on the, dis the uh, distributed router. Uh, transport zone, you're go we're going to want to end the overlay. Uh, there are other transport zones, but we're, we're talking about overlay traffic right now. That looks good. We hit save. It doesn't look good. Did it tell me why it doesn't look good? It overlaps. Okay. So we're going to go to step up. So what it, what it said, what the error said was that it was overlapping with the, the DNS server range which is something that comes pre-configured from, from Oracle. Now we have the VDI segment. If we go here, we now see VDI that we have the, the port group here. So we could start deploying. However, there's some other networking that we want to want to talk about. And that is the NAT. So whenever we're, we're working with the uh, Oracle's deployed NSX, the NAT rules are created inside the advanced networking and security portal. What that means is you need to go in here and make sure that there are rules that will allow your range that you just set up, you know, say for our NSX, our range needs to be able to talk with NAT to the internet. For instance, 
you know, right here, 10.255.8.0 slash 21 can talk to the internet with uh, NAT, but then it doesn't do NAT or it says no SNAT for talking to anything on the internal domain. The rules have been edited whenever we were cre working with the domain controller to extend out the range. Um, but if we wanted to, let's say, add a rule just for this one subnet, if we wanted to get even more more specific. So we're going to say don't do subnet mask if the source IP is 10.255.14.0/24. So don't add it if we are going to talk to this is just an example to show don't NAT if we're talking to the connection server, the on-premises connection server in Chicago. Right. So if we wanted to be extremely specific on that, you know, that, that rule would do it. By default, whenever you set up a workload domain, whenever you're doing the OCVS deploy, when it gives you that option to set up a workload domain, it'll create a lot of these rules. You know, as you can see here, it's created this rule. 10.255.9.0. That was the original rule. Um, and we just went in and created some more wide rules as we're adding more subnets. But NAT is very important. You can get caught up if you don't go and make sure the NAT rules align to your networking topology. So we've confirmed everything is working network-wise and we've added a new segment. So I think is time to, uh, to pause and then start working on our VDI deployment. Is there anything else that... Yeah. So at this point, we've integrated the overlay VM networking and the OCVS, the Oracle Cloud VMware solution, into our on-premises VMware environment. So you've already configured uh, our, our Oracle VM-based, OCVS-based <laughs> domain controller. So we've you've got that configured up. Yeah, so we've established essentially layer three networking, so routed networking between the two locations. You've built a DNS server for us, although we could have referred back to the on-premises DNS server. I like having services either side of that WAN link, that fast connect between the two data centers. So uh, we have DNS service from our network. We have uh, Active Directory from our network inside the um, Ashburn uh, VMware deployment. So yeah, I think we're good for the, the networking layer. And so thanks, John. That's that's really good. Uh, we've joined together the VMware networking in, in our on-premises environment with the VMware networking in our um, Oracle VMware environment. And I think, as you say, the next next phase is to look at how we integrate the, view man the uh, vSphere management between the two sites and then start uh, integrating some view. Thank you for joining us on this video with the Build Day TV series, looking at the Oracle VMware solution. Uh, as always with YouTube, like, subscribe, and uh, click the notification bell. <laughs> we will see you again in more Build Day TV episodes. Uh, coming back to look at that linked mode with view, but uh, with linked mode with vCenter uh, between the two data centers and then getting view up and running to see whether this is where we want to extend our on-premises view environment.